is the sun shrinking. There has been some controversy among creationist groups in the last 10 years over this question. The sun is shrinking, there's not much question about that, but does that prove it's not billions of years old? Well, I think so. The sun is burning, obviously, you can step outside and look at it. It's losing about 5 million tons every second. Quite a weight loss program. Well, that means, of course, it used to be bigger. You don't need to be too much of a genius to figure that out. Uh, Bulletin of American Astronomical Society ran an article back in 79, which some people have argued about, the legitimacy of this, but they said, since 1836, more than 100 different observers at the Royal Greenwich Observatory, that's in England, and the U.S. Naval Observatory have made direct visual measurements that suggest the sun's diameter is shrinking at a rate of a tenth of a percent each century, or about five feet an hour. Let's assume that is correct for the moment. If the sun is burning and it's losing five feet an hour, that would be the diameter. So the radius, it would only be two and a half feet of radius. It's 93 million miles to the Earth. You divide that by two and a half feet per hour, you're going to find out it cannot possibly be billions of years old. That, of course, would assume several things. Has the rate always been the same? You know, has the rate of burn always been the same, et cetera, et cetera? I know there's a lot of assumptions built in. But I think we could all agree the sun is burning. I think we could all agree it's getting smaller. Uh, several indirect techniques also confirm the sun is shrinking although these inferred about one-seventh as much from Science Magazine. Here's a chart showing the graph of what has been observed, written down. I mean, they look at the sun, they measure the diameter using trigonometry, and it's close enough to work that way, that <clears throat> they measure the numbers and say, wow, the sun's diameter, polar and equatorial, is shrinking. Now, I know the sun oscillates. It swells and contracts and swells. You know, it's, bur it's burning like a marshmallow, you know. But generally, you can see from the graph, it is losing diameter, losing size. Well, <clears throat> if you go back billions of years, of years, you would assume this would make a problem. If the sun were bigger, it would pretty soon absorb Mercury and then Venus and then Earth. I don't know how far back you'd have to go. And I think Christians would be wise to not put a number on it. Don't say, well, you know, 18.6 million years ago this would happen. Because what happens, the atheists then argue about the number and they miss the whole point. They miss the concept. The fact is, guys, it's burning, it used to be bigger, this creates a problem for your theory. The bigger problem, though, than just the size of the sun is the mass. <clears throat> Gravity is directly proportional to the, how heavy the objects are, the mass of the object. If the sun were more massive, gravity would be stronger, and that's going to start sucking planets in, drawing them out of their orbit. So yes, the sun is shrinking, and I think it creates a problem for those who want to believe the universe is billions of years old. I wouldn't put a number on it, but it certainly makes a problem somewhere. Now, Danny Faulkner is a, an astronomer at University in South Carolina. He's a good friend of mine, been down here uh, to do some taping with us when, we, uh, debated, when I debated Hugh Ross. He's got a great article, it's kind of long on his website, but he says, The Young Faint Sun Paradox and the Age of the Solar System by Danny Faulkner. <clears throat> you can go to his website and read about that. But He says, because the sun, if you go back in time, would have been dimmer. This creates a problem. How can plants have survived with the changing brightness of the sun also? Evolutionists maintain that life appeared on the earth about 3.8 billion years ago. Since then, the sun would have brightened 25%. Well, if the sun is 25% brighter now than it was then, how could plants have evolved? It goes through some good legitimate points here. The, the faint young sun paradox is a problem for those who believe in evolution. He says the logical conclusion he comes to is, it's not billions of years old. Of course, the other astronomers say, oh, that's not possible. Of course, you know, it's billions of years old. Of course it is. <laughs> they don't like that idea.